Most people think that dying without a will only affects the ultra wealthy, but that couldn't be further from the truth. What's more alarming is that 50% of Australians think that way because most adult Australians don't have a will. This leaves their loved ones to navigate the legal and emotional turmoil of dealing with intestacy. Intestacy is when a person passes away without a will and therefore they are deemed to have died intestate and are governed by the New South Wales Secession Act. This involves a complicated process of working out the remaining survivors or relatives of the deceased. When you've left a valid will, then your will will set out exactly your intentions and how you wish to distribute your assets. Whereas now, without a will, you're left to the Secession Act, which will have a order of distribution of your estate. So the order of distribution will start with by looking at uh, whether the first priority is whether you have a spouse or a de facto partner. Then it will go to children. And then if you don't have a spouse or children, then it will go to your parents. Following that, it will go to brothers and sisters, then grandparents, then aunts and aunties. So as you can see, that order is what I guess the government thinks is a logical and right order, but it may not suit your wishes. The first misconception is that everything goes to the spouse. And that's not always the case if there are children from a previous marriage. Another misconception is that people think, oh, my state's gonna be left in accordance with my verbal wishes anyway. But that's also not correct because without a will, how does anyone substantiate what your verbal wishes were? Another very common misconception is that people think that if I don't have that many assets, then I don't really need a will. But the will serves all other purposes than just the distribution of the assets. For example, if you have children, the will will set out who the guardians of your minor children are and how you would like them to be raised. And that's obviously a very important consideration to people. A final misconception is that people don't bother with a will because they think that it can be challenged. And that can be true, but without a will, a court will have no understanding of your intentions, of your relationships, of your life. And so it will be very difficult for it to make a decision when someone challenges it and to work out whether there is any validity in that challenge. We have left a will, it's a probate application and the will is submitted to the courts. So where you've left a will, your will will set out exactly how you want your assets to be distributed and then the executive of your will, which is basically the person you said will be responsible for managing your will, will go to court, will obtain a document from the court which is called probate, which will allow that person to then gather in your assets and then distribute it in accordance with your wishes. And that's quite a straightforward exercise and that is probably the easiest way to do it. If there is no will, then you have to obtain legal authority to manage and look after that estate. And the way you would do it would be to apply for what is called letters of administration. And so then the court will appoint an administrator to the estate. The administrator can be someone who has standing or close relative of the deceased, whether it's a spouse, children, family members. And where there are no suitable administrators, the court can appoint a New South Wales trustee and guardian as an administrator. So having a will will alleviate the potential for turmoil and disputes between family members because your will will set out exactly how you wanted your assets to be left. An example would be a matter where we worked on where father didn't leave a valid will and this meant that on his passing, it wasn't a straightforward exercise where the balance of the properties would just go to the spouse. And this meant that we had to apply for letters of administration with the Supreme Court and had to jump through a lot of hoops and hurdles to prove to the Supreme Court that the spouse was entitled to the estate. So this took a lot of time and also cost. There are a number of important considerations when it comes to preparing your will. Some of these include who is the executor of your will, which is the person that you trust to manage your will and the distribution of assets. Who will be the beneficiaries of your will and how you will divide your assets, whether there are specific gifts to certain family members versus others. A really important part of one's will is actually if they have children, who is going to be the guardian of their children. And that's uh, one of the areas where I believe that a lot of people put off 
making a will because they don't want to have these difficult conversations and confront these difficult decisions uh, so early in, in peace. But they're very important because if you don't choose the right guardian, then you may have all sorts of turmoil between different family members who all want the best for those minor children, but they don't necessarily reflect your wishes and how you want to bring up your children. Also your assets, like how you want to leave your assets and who do you want to leave it to. There may be gifts of watches, cars, there may be property. You may want someone to keep living in a certain property after you pass. And there may be other businesses that you want to continue. So all of these are important considerations that will go into your will. As your life changes, as your journey progresses, and as things change, then you can always review your will and update your will. Think of a will as a very fluid instrument and some examples of this will include if you get married, if you go through a divorce, if you have children, a beneficiary passes away, you acquire businesses or different assets, or if you move interstate. All of these are good times to review your will. One important thing to understand is that when you get divorced, it doesn't mean that your whole will was revoked. Only certain parts of your will may be revoked, which includes any gifts to that former spouse and that former spouse being the executor of your will. But rather than just rely on certain parts of it to be revoked, it's a very important time to rethink your will and actually prepare a new will. Preparing a will, especially for the first time, can, is a very daunting experience. We can help you navigate the different considerations to answer any questions you have. And also, it's very important that we work with your trust, other trust advisors, such as your financial plan and accountant, so that we can deliver a holistic solution for you.